If your stainless pipe and tubing welds look like this, then you're not done yet. I'm going to show you a few methods that I use to clean the color off of pipe and tube welds. Then I'll show you the proper way to treat stainless steel after welding it. So if you weld stainless or will ever weld stainless, then you'll want to watch the whole video. I'm also going to show you specifically what products I use. So without any more lollygagging or dilly-dallying, let's get right into it. When I weld stainless tubing, I typically wire brush my starts and stops by hand while I'm welding. But after the weld is made, I usually hit it with one of these wheels. These are radial bristle brushes from 3M. They have a whole array of colors with each color being a different grit, leaving a slightly different finish. I'm going to show you the finish each one leaves here in just a sec. But for tubing, I often use the green or yellow wheel. They leave a similar finish. After that, I take a piece of purple scotch bright to the area by hand to blend it a little better. This is a food grade sanitary tubing weld. Sanitary tube is polished already for aesthetics and cleanliness. These big name food, beverage, and pharmaceutical plants want nothing but shiny stainless in their plants. So leaving the color on is not really an option. I would recommend keeping one or two of these in your tool set if you work with stainless often. I'll link them down below. Also, it is easiest to clean the color off of stainless while it's still warm. Uh, maybe not screaming hot, but these wheels can handle a good bit of heat. When I'm welding schedule pipe, I prefer the brown wheel. This is the most aggressive of the radial bristle brushes. Sometimes when I'm feeling frisky, I'll hit it with a piece of Scotch-Brite as well. You can even tape the area to give it some nice clean lines. Of course, some guys just hit it with a wire wheel or leave the color on. In the field that I work in, that isn't usually an option. So it really depends on the application and what the customer wants. Some other solid options for cleaning the color off of stainless are these Scotch-Brite wheels. Blue and purple are pretty fine, while the black wheel is a very coarse and aggressive wheel. And if you really want to put a nice polish on stainless, the gray wheel from Scotch-Brite works best on a grinder and can even take a little material off. Actually, all these wheels can be used on a grinder. I'll typically just throw a piece of all thread in a drill, use some washers and nuts. I can get in some tighter spots that way. All of these tools take off color for the sake of taking off the color. But when stainless melts into a liquid, it loses its stainless properties and corrosion resistance as the iron particles brought to the surface of the stainless meet oxygen. That means the stainless is no longer passive and that's why you passivate after welding. I use this stuff. It's called Wonder Gel from d -Rust it It's a combination of nitric and hydrofluoric acids and some other stuff. It removes the iron and discoloration, restoring an inert protective oxide layer. This stuff will prevent it from surface rusting in the future. I paint it on, let it sit for five to 10 minutes, this stuff is pretty nasty, so you definitely want to wear glasses and gloves. Also, if you apply it to a very hot weld and breathe in the fumes, you might wake up on the floor. Next, I'll clean it good with a wet piece of Scotch-Brite, then I dry it off and hit it with some dry Scotch-Brite. I do always keep a few rolls of this stuff around because it's a quick and easy way to shine up stainless steel. The food, beverage, and pharmaceutical industries will often require the inside of all stainless welded piping to be passivated as well before product starts running through it. However, that's usually outsourced to professionals. I've been in plants before where there's a light rust colored ring around all the welds on a stainless line. Chances are that's because they were just welded and buffed, never passivated properly. Of course, it takes a long time for that to occur. And the chances that a little outer surface rust will affect the product inside are slim to none. Passivating stainless welds is still the proper thing to do in those kinds of plants. Also, I should give a shout out to electrolytic weld cleaning. I don't have one of those machines, but that is another way to passivate stainless using acid and an electrically charged brush. I put a few beads on a piece of sanitary tubing. I want to give you a good side-by-side -side comparison of these radial bristle brushes. I'm going to start with the most coarse wheel and end with the most fine. They're calling this one a 36 grit. It easily takes off all the color very quickly. It also roughs up the polish quite a bit. It's going to take a little bit of blending. That's why I typically use this one for pipe or structural, not sanitary tubing. Next up is the green wheel. They're calling this a 50 grit. You can see this one's well-worn and smaller than all the rest. They don't really lose their efficiency over time and they do last quite a while. You can easily get a year out of one wheel even if you're welding sanitary every day. Green wheel takes off quite a bit of color and does require some blending by hand afterwards. Next up is the yellow or the 80 grit. 
pretty similar to the green. I use them almost interchangeably. Both very effective, but I do typically buff them out afterward. The next four I'm going to try out are new to me. Actually, I haven't used these before, so I'm excited to see how they stack up. First up is the white wheel. They're calling this 120 grit. This one's taking a little bit longer to get rid of that color, but it does take off all the color and actually leaves a pretty nice finish too. Nicer than the yellow wheel. The red wheel, they're calling a 220 grit. You can see it's getting a little harder to take the color off with each wheel, but the red wheel does well. And here you can see I'm even taking the print off the side of the tubing. I'm pretty impressed with the red and white. I might start working them into my tool set. The blue wheel is a 400 grit wheel and leaves a very nice finish and is able to also take all the color off as well as those printed letters and numbers on the side of the tubing. These welds are all pretty cold. The color would come off a little easier if they were warm. Next up is the light green wheel. They're calling this one micron and man these bristles are soft. You're going to have to give me a minute. So I'm pretty unimpressed with this wheel. I'm sure some of you guys will have a use for it, but it took off approximately zero color and couldn't even take the writing off the side of the tubing. So I backed up to the spot where I polished with the blue wheel and tried to feather in those marks a little bit. It might have helped a little bit, really hard to tell here. I also want to show you a few Scotch-Brite wheels that I mentioned earlier. I use these on a grinder. This is the purple wheel. It's more aggressive than the radial bristle brushes and easily takes the color off. These wheels are also great for other applications, not just pipe and tubing. Also, pretty much everything in this video is linked below, as well as my storefront. You can check out all the tools and equipment that I use daily. This blue wheel is pretty similar to the purple wheel, but with a finer finish. And hey, if you want more welding and fitting videos, make sure you follow and click the bell. Those two things tell me that people are interested and that it would be worth my time to keep making videos. Also, this gray wheel is from Scotch-Brite. It leaves a nice clean polish and actually takes down some material. You can see here that I'm buffing part of this weld out completely, leaving it nice and smooth and it almost looks electro-polished. A few video ideas I had were how to get clean, colorful stainless welds or how to fit pipe from start to finish or walking the cup versus free handing versus dabbing. Let me know what you think and check out all the other welding and fitting videos on my channel. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm Drew and I'm Welding America.